I got you to rage click on this video, but the fact still remains. The DMT aliens, elves, and entities you see while you're on DMT, they're not real. They are a figment of your own imagination and they do not exist in any other world, dimension, universe, or reality, but the one you've constructed in your mind. It's all in your head. DMT, N-N-dimethyltryptamine, is one of the most powerful psychedelic drugs known to humanity. When you smoke it, within seconds, your entire field of vision gets replaced with impossible geometry, fractal patterns, and vivid hallucinations that feel more real than reality itself. But DMT is unique among psychedelics for one specific reason. A huge number of users report encountering entities, beings, aliens, elves, intelligent creatures that seem to exist independently that communicate with you. They welcome you into their world and they appear to have their own agenda. A 2020 study surveyed 2,561 adults about their DMT entity encounters. In 81% of respondents described these encounters as being more real than reality. Only 9% believe these beings existed completely within myself. So here's the question. Are these entities real? Are they actual beings from another dimension that DMT allows us to perceive? Or are they hallucinations created by the brain while on drugs? We're going to systematically dismantle this idea that DMT aliens are real using science, logic, and a healthy dose of skepticism. But before we go on, be sure to like and subscribe and follow on X, TikTok, and Instagram, all at Topado. Let's talk about the man who popularized this entire concept, Terence McKenna. McKenna was an ethnobotanist, author, great communicator and philosopher who graduated from UC Berkeley. He became one of the most vocal supporters of DMT in the 20th century and one of my personal psychedelic heroes. McKenna spoke of hallucinations while on DMT in which he met intelligent entities he described as self-transforming machine elves. He also called them jeweled self-dribbling basketballs, translinguistic elves, friendly fractal entities, and elf legions of hyperspace. Now McKenna was a brilliant speaker and a captivating storyteller. His descriptions of DMT experiences are poetic, profound, and undeniably influential. He shaped how an entire generation talks about and understands psychedelic experiences, including myself. But here's the problem. He genuinely seemed to believe these entities were real autonomous beings from another dimension. Now, some of you may argue McKenna meant this metaphorically, that he was using poetic language to describe an ineffable experience. And maybe he did, at least sometimes. But even if McKenna himself understood the metaphorical nature of his descriptions, millions of people who followed him took it literally. Which means now, I have to tell you why DMT entities are not real, and by the end of this, you will agree with me. Let's start with a fundamental principle of scientific reasoning, Occam's razor, also known as the law of parsimony. Occam's razor states that when you have multiple explanations for a phenomenon, the simplest one, the one that requires the fewest assumptions, is usually correct. So we have two competing explanations for DMT entities. Explanation one, DMT is a powerful hallucinogenic drug that causes your visual cortex to generate vivid, complex hallucinations. These hallucinations sometimes takes the form of beings or entities because the human brain is wired to recognize faces and patterns. The experience feels real because the same neural pathways that process actual perception are being activated. Or explanation two, DMT opens a portal to a hidden dimension of reality that exists parallel to our own. In this dimension, there are actual alien beings with their own intelligence and agency. These beings exist independently of human consciousness and can only be perceived when DMT alters our brain chemistry to access orthogonal dimensions or hyperspace frequencies. Which explanation requires fewer assumptions? Which is more consistent with everything else we know about how the brain and drugs work? Obviously, explanation one. It's the simplest, most parsimonious explanation that fits all the available evidence. Explanation two requires us to assume that hidden dimensions exist, that beings live in these dimensions, 
that these beings are somehow similar enough to human concepts that we interpret them as elves or aliens, that DMT specifically and uniquely allows us access to these dimensions, and that our brain can somehow perceive extra-dimensional beings, and that all of this happens without any physical mechanism we could detect or measure. That's a lot of assumptions, and not a single one has any scientific evidence supporting it. Okay, now this should be obvious, but apparently it needs to be said. DMT is a hallucinogenic drug. Hallucinations are literally what it does. When you take DMT, it activates 5-HT2A receptors in your brain, causing spontaneous neural firing that creates vivid visual experiences that are not generally congruent with external reality. Seeing things that aren't there while on a drug specifically designed to make you see things that aren't there is not evidence that those things actually exist. If people were seeing machine elves while sober, just walking around in normal waking consciousness, that would be interesting. That would be something we need to explain. But seeing entities while on one of the most powerful hallucinogens known to humanity, that's exactly what we would expect. It's like being surprised that alcohol makes you drunk or that caffeine makes you alert. DMT makes you hallucinate. Hallucinations can include entities. Mystery solved. Some people argue that DMT changes the frequency at which your neurons fire and that this allows you to tune into other dimensions the way a radio tunes into different frequencies. This sounds scientific, but it's nonsense. Yes, neurons fire at different frequencies and yes, DMT affects neural oscillations. But changing the firing frequency of neurons doesn't open portals to other dimensions it changes how your brain processes information. Different neural frequencies are associated with different mental states. Gamma waves are associated with focused attention. Alpha waves with relaxation. Theta waves with drowsiness. These are all different modes of information processing within your brain, not different channels tuning into different external realities. When DMT alters neural frequencies, it's changing how your brain constructs conscious experience. It's not turning your brain into a cosmic radio station broadcasting from hyperspace. The whole neural frequency metaphor sounds appealing because we're all familiar with radios and TV channels. But brains don't work like radios. There's no external signal being received. Your brain generates consciousness internally through an electrochemical process. Now here's a simple question. Show me where elves exist in the real world. Show me a fairy. Show me where these entities can be found when people aren't on drugs. You can't because they don't exist. They are fictional creatures invented by humans across various cultures. The only reason we have concepts like elves and aliens and fairies is because humans created and imagined them. Nature didn't create elves, humans did. So when people encounter elf-like entities on DMT, they're not discovering real elves that exist independently. They're experiencing hallucinations that their brain interprets using pre-existing cultural frameworks. This is why DMT entities often reflect cultural expectations. Western users influenced by science fiction see aliens and machine elves. Indigenous ayahuasca users see jungle spirits and animal guides. The specific form the entity takes depends on the cultural context and expectations of the person experiencing them. If DMT entities were objectively real beings from another dimension, we would expect them to be consistent across cultures and independent cultural conditioning. But they're not. They conform to your expectations. Some people argue there's no way my brain could create something this complex and alien. It must be real because I could never imagine something like this on my own. This argument massively underestimates what your brain is capable of. Your brain constructs your entire experience of reality every single moment of your consciousness. It takes raw sensory data, photons hitting your retina, air pressure changes in your ear, chemical signals from your nose, and transforms them into a rich, detailed, meaningful world you experience. This process is called predictive processing. Your brain doesn't passively receive reality, it actively constructs a model of reality based on sensory inputs and your prior expectations. 
When you take DMT, you're disrupting this reality construction machinery. And your brain is wildly creative. Think about fiction authors who create entire worlds, detailed histories, complex characters, alien civilizations, impossible architectures. J.R. Tolkien created Middle Earth, complete with multiple languages, thousands of years of history, and dozens of distinct cultures. Frank Herbert created the universe of Dune. These are ordinary human brains generating extraordinarily complex fictional realities. DMT entities aren't beyond your brain's creative capacity. They're examples of what your brain can create when you remove the guardrails of normal waking consciousness. Wow. Carl Sagan developed what he called a baloney detection kit a set of tools for critical thinking and distinguishing real science from pseudoscience. So let's apply some of these tools to the DMT entity's hypothesis. Number one, can the claim be tested and potentially disproven? No, there's no experiment that could prove DMT entities don't exist in another dimension because the hypothesis keeps moving the goalposts. It's unfalsifiable, which means it's not scientific. Number two, does it rely on confirmation bias? Yes. People who believe in DMT entities remember and emphasize experiences that support the belief while dismissing or rationalizing experiences that don't fit. Number three, does it make sense based on what we already know? No, it requires us to throw out everything we understand about how drugs work, how the brain works, and how perception works. Number four, is there a simpler explanation? Yes, hallucinations caused by a hallucinogenic drug. Number five, what's the quality of evidence? Entirely subjective. No physical evidence, no reproducible measurements, no way to verify claims independently. Now using the scientific method and basic critical thinking, the DMT alien hypothesis just doesn't hold up. It's indistinguishable from any other unfalsifiable supernatural claim. So if DMT entities aren't beings from another dimension, then what are they? The most likely explanation is they're externalized representations of your own inner dialogue and unconscious processes. Every single day you create inner dialogue. You have conversations with yourself. You imagine what other people might say or think. You work through problems by mentally simulating different perspectives. You're constantly creating mental models of other agents, what psychologists call theory of mind. Your brain has dedicated neural machinery for simulating other minds and predicting what they may do. On DMT, this machinery goes into overdrive. The parts of your brain that simulate other agents become hyperactive and without normal constraints of sensory reality, they manifest as seemingly autonomous entities. These entities often give advice, share insights, or communicate meaningful messages. Why? Because they are you talking to yourself. They're your unconscious mind, your intuitions, your suppressed thoughts manifesting in externalized form. It's actually quite beautiful when you think about it. DMT allows you to encounter aspects of yourself that are normally hidden or inaccessible. The entities represent parts of your own psyche, your wisdom, your fears, your creativity, but they're not external beings. They're internal processes given external form by a brain on drugs. Look, I get why people want DMT entities to be real. It would be amazing if a simple molecule could prove that there's some other dimension, alien intelligences, and vast cosmic mysteries waiting to be discovered. The universe would be more magical, more mysterious, more meaningful if psychedelics were literal doorways to other realms rather than just drugs that alter brain chemistry. But reality doesn't care about what we want to be true. Reality is what it is, independent of our desires or beliefs. And here's the thing, reality, it's already magical and mysterious without needing to invent interdimensional elves. The fact that a single molecule can completely transform conscious experience reveals something profound about the nature of consciousness itself. The fact that your brain can generate experiences this vivid, this meaningful, this seemingly autonomous shows just how powerful and mysterious consciousness truly is. You don't need DMT to access other dimensions to have a profound experience. The profound experience is what happens inside your brain. Consciousness itself is the mystery. Believing in fake aliens and entities just cheapens that. It looks for magic outside yourself instead of recognizing the genuine magic of consciousness 
brain function and subjective experience that resides within you. So let's recap everything we've covered. Terrence McKenna popularized the concept of DMT machine elves, describing them as autonomous beings from hyperspace. Whether he meant this literally or metaphorically, millions took it literally. Occam's razor clearly favors the simplest explanation that DMT causes hallucinations and sometimes hallucinations look like entities. You are on a powerful hallucinogenic drug known as DMT and seeing things that aren't there is exactly what we would expect. This is not evidence that those things are actually real. The frequency tuning argument just doesn't work because brains don't work like radios. Changing neural oscillations changes information processing, not dimensional access. Elves, aliens, fairies are fictitious creatures invented by humans. They don't exist in reality. So encountering elf-like entities on DMT doesn't mean you've discovered real elves. Your brain is absolutely capable of creating incredibly complex alien experiences. Fiction writers do it all the time without drugs. The scientific method and critical thinking clearly shows that DMT entities fail as a scientific hypothesis. The evidence is purely subjective and the claims are unfalsifiable. The most likely explanation is DMT entities are externalized representations of your own unconscious processes. You're essentially having a conversation with yourself, but your brain presents it as an encounter with other beings. And finally, reality is already profound and mysterious without needing fake aliens. The real mystery is consciousness itself, and DMT reveals just how powerful and creative your own mind can be. And yes, I know some of you are thinking, Zeus, have you met the entities? How do you know they're not real? Yes, I've had many DMT experiences, and yes, I've encountered entities. They felt completely real in the moment, but feelings aren't facts and subjective conviction is not scientific evidence. The fact that something feels real doesn't make it real. Dreams feel real while you're in them. Hallucinations feel real to people experiencing them. Schizophrenics are convinced the voices they hear are real. Subjective certainty is not the same as objective truth. If you wanna dive deeper into the neuroscience of DMT entity encounters and why psychedelics create such convincing alternate realities, then join my Patreon where I break down the research and share additional insights. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Your Drug on Brains. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, I read all of them, and follow on X, TikTok, and Instagram, all at Tapado. Three, two, one.